know very much. It really very, is. Very, very exciting. She made history with the Lionesses during the Women's World Cup. But the path to success hasn't always been easy for midfielder Georgia Stanway. To ensure she could achieve her dream of playing for England, Georgia and her mum, Joanne, had to make a lot of sacrifices along the way. But as the years of hard work finally pay off, Georgia and Joanne are joining us now. Good morning to you both. Now, we've got Georgia's here on the yes, sofa. Yes, absolutely. But Georgia's mum, Joanne. You're still there, aren't you? I am. <laughs> yes, yes. We're she's... in a camper van at the moment. <laughs> Everybody loves a camper van. Everybody loves a camper van. Uh, where, whereabouts are you in Australia right now? Uh, just outside Sydney, at Blue Mountains. Oh, very oh, nice. Yes. Were you not tempted to stay with her, Georgia? <laughs> I know, I would love to, but football doesn't rest. No, it, it doesn't. Well, That's first things it. first, congratulations. Oh, my goodness uh, me. Yeah, uh, we are so proud. Yeah, everybody we? is so proud. Mm -hmm. The whole country was behind you. Do you ever get, do you get that sense all the way in Australia that you know that here we're all going wild we're and went wild for it? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's kind of only when you come back out and you're, like, removed from the bubble that you realise how big it actually went. And when you see the numbers of how many people actually watched it on TV mm -hmm. and, yeah, the pubs were full, the government changed the rules for alcohol to yeah. be served earlier. And I think, yeah, it's mad how football's changing. It, it really is crazy. And, I mean, the success has just yeah. gone from strength to strength. Obviously, the Euros last year won the Euros. Be being in the World Cup, I mean, does that... This is something that I know that you've dreamed about since being a baby, pretty much, right? But did this... Are you getting a real sense of that you're living your dreams or are you, or are you just in this bubble where it's sort of happening around you? Um, I think a little bit of both. You kind of only realise it, like, when you come out of it or, like, when you sit back. But I think with football, the... It never rests, so you're always focused on the next thing. So, right. like, we returned from here and we're obviously mixed emotions because we're so proud of the fact that we've gone so far, but also to fall short is, yeah, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. So it's, like, always on to the next thing. So it's, like, now it'll be going back to club football and then after that it'll be trying to get a spot at the yeah, Olympics. So there's not that much time, really, to soak it up. Yeah. yeah no, is there yeah. time to have a holiday? There's not now, no. Really? No. Yeah, the next holiday will hopefully be next summer. So. OK. Wow. Well, that's for you, but for your mum, <laughs> there, <laughs> there is time for a holiday, <laughs> and she's having it right now. Uh, Joanne, you, you <laughs> must be immensely proud, mm -hmm. but you have made a lot of sacrifices along the way, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, we're all immensely proud, not only of Georgia, but just the whole Lionesses, every squad, the staff, um, the boss. Um, they've just been absolutely phenomenal, you know. And, uh, yeah, we've had sacrifices on the way, but I think these highs now make up for it all. Oh, absolutely that. Now, I can only... I was saying to Georgia earlier when she first sat down before we, we went live, I was saying that I can only imagine... I'm a mum of three. My baby being in the World Cup and on that pitch, I don't think anyone would want to sit near me <laughs> or, or know me. What's it like for you watching that, Joanne? Oh, it, I mean, it, it was a roller coaster of uh, emotions, you know, the final. Um, and I think it starts in the morning where I, I just turn myself off social media, yeah. I go for a walk, and I don't turn up to the party till about two hours before the kickoff. Yeah. And that's the only way I can deal with the nerves. But uh, immensely proud of everybody, you know, uh, they've done truly uh, remarkable things over the past, you know, couple of years. Mm. And, and, and I know they lost at the final, but uh, I read uh, everywhere that they've won the hearts of many hundreds and thousands of, of you know, more supporters and extra supporters. The line which is always a good thing. When, when you're in the bubble that you mentioned, do you get to see your family much? Uh, yeah, so on match day plus one is usually family time. Match day plus, as in the day yeah, after the... the day after the game, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Lingo that they use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, neither of us are in <laughs> national football team. Yeah, right, yeah. OK. So we get to see them in the stands, so yeah. they actually did a good job. Um, our federation, where they held all the families back, so we went, got changed, come back out, and our families were still waiting for us. So we got to have, like, a little group then, and then, yeah, the day after the game, um, we went for dinner, so... And we can see how incredibly well you gel on the pitch. You know, your success your mm. success says that. What's the dynamic like off the pitch? Is it like being away with sister? Like, how how is that? Yeah, you just get on with it. Like, it's weird to think that you're in a room full of 
yeah, 23 girls and then amongst that there's like 40 staff members and everybody just gets on and I think the biggest thing is you're just all on the same goal, like you're there for, to do the same thing and you want what's best for each other so whether you're playing or you're not playing, you still got that inner belief to yeah. whoever is going to go out there. It's like a trust thing. It wasn't your first World Cup. Um, did you do much better, in your opinion, as a team, you played so much better than you did last time? Um, yeah, I think so. And I think it's different with different squads. So, like, obviously, you never know what's going to happen at a World Cup because, yeah, teams turn up and give it beans. So, yeah, you literally <laughs> never know what's yeah. going to happen. So, yeah, for us to go and get the silver is, yeah, for show me, us. it's unbelievable. Yeah, let's show have us, a look at us, it. We've all sort of this. been like, <gasps> this is it. That's, and it, it is quite weighty, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it, it weighs quite a lot. Mum, have you had a chance to actually see the medal yourself in the flesh? I have. It's the cracking World Cup silver medal. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. <laughs> and what, how do you feel? Obviously, like we, we've, as Andy said, and you know, I'm sure you've heard tenfold since you've been back. We've all been behind you. How does it feel being such a role model to so many young children? You know, girls and boys, but particularly for young female players. Um. I'm just here, like, doing my job, doing my what I wanted to do when I was younger. And ever since I was a little kid, Mum will vouch for me that I always wanted to kick a ball around and I never sat still. And <laughs> for me to turn my passion and my hobby into my dream and into a full-time job is unbelievable. And I looked up to people, I looked up to my parents, I looked up to other footballers, I looked up to other athletes. And for me to be a role model now, I think it's, yeah, it's kind of surreal because... Yeah, I'm just living my dream and I'm just doing exactly what I wanted to do when I was a kid. But yeah, by you doing that, you inspire so many, yeah. Yeah, so many and, people yeah. to do the same. Which and I'm only incredible. from a really small town, so yeah, Barrow I've and always Furness. yeah, exactly. Okay. I've always said that I'm just a girl from Barrow, and mm -hmm. now I think people are being like, okay, maybe we can venture out. Absolutely, of Barrow. absolutely. That. So now you got back yesterday. There's been a little bit of criticism that there were people waiting at the airport yeah. for you and you didn't, I mean, you can see the scenes there, uh, that you didn't get to walk out through the exit. Do you as players get a say in that or is that all, all it's, it all happens around you? Yeah, it all happens around us. I had no idea until afterwards when we got back on the coach and there was a few tweets out saying that they were disappointed. Right, yeah. And yeah, that's hard for us because we yeah. want to give back to the fans as much as possible. But I guess the FA have got a job to look yeah, after us. And course. obviously after that flight, they probably just wanted to get us out of the back door mm -hmm. and get us, yeah, get us our heads down as quick as possible. Yeah. But yeah, we want the opportunity to be able to connect with fans. So we'll do that on social social media and we've got another camp in three, four weeks time. So. And another that's England camp. Yeah, oh my another gosh. England camp. So it's on, stop. Yeah, an opportunity that we can see the fans there. So. And that's where social media is so good. And I know you're all very good on, so, you know, on yes, social absolutely. and communicating with the fans and that's brilliant. We also, we've also become so much so obsessed with your hairstyles, girls, <laughs> that we're actually doing a nice yeah, little exactly bit later so on true. the show yeah. about power ponies. Yeah. Who knew pulling your hair back to play football? Exactly. <laughs> There's the pony it's girl, look at that. It's such a trend, but yeah. yeah, we've all become obsessed, so we're doing that a little bit is later it, on. Is it a tactical thing? Does it make you more speedy? Is it, <laughs> is it if you wave it, you distract I'm just sure it probably just I'm doesn't get in the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like when you've got it out of the way, then it's just less yeah. hassle. Yeah. So a bob like what Rochelle has wouldn't be practical. No, you know, bob not would be chance. bobbing, imagine. Yeah, not practical, not practical. No. <laughs> Mum, we don't want to leave you out all the way over. Were you sporting a power ponytail <laughs> on occasions as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> He's a bucket hat wearer. So. No, oh, yes. oh, I love trendy, that for you. Love yeah. that. What a trendy mum. Cool. Yeah. When do you go back to club football as well? Um, next week. So our season starts in two weeks' time. So very quick turnaround. Yeah. Do you know what I have to say? It's it's kind of quite funny because you're a superstar right now. Yeah. You don't even realise. I it. know. You are a superstar. It all in your uh, so to come onto this show, we're so grateful. Mum mm -hmm. in Australia, we're very grateful that you kept at it with your daughter because look yes. what she's achieved. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you enjoy that holiday. Yeah. You enjoy that holiday. Yeah. And, <laughs> and enjoy your camper van. Yes. No, enjoy your camper van. Yeah. You can relax now. <laughs> uh, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Thank you and so much. And good luck. Thanks, Thanks for having you. me. Thank you very much. Right.